Paris, Americans around the nation and, of course, here in Chicago are remembering Colin Powell. The former Secretary of State's family says he died today from complications of COVID-19. The 84-year-old former Army general went on to become a diplomat, national security leader, and, of course, a top White House advisor. Chicago Tonight's Amanda Venicky spent the day speaking with security specialists and people who worked with the former Secretary of State. Amanda Venicky joins us now with the story. Amanda. Yes, Brandis. Colin Powell died after a lifetime of public service. The child of Jamaican immigrants, Powell was born in the Bronx. And then he didn't go to West Point or, you know, one of those prestigious military academies. Rather, he joined the military through the ROTC and then, yes, eventually rising to the rank of general before going on to serve as the youngest chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, Northwestern University political scientist Ian Hunt said credits Powell with making that, Ian Heard that is, credits Powell with making that position the high profile on TV role that it is today. He says that Powell became a household name with his tough, realistic edge coupled with a welcoming tone. A welcoming tone that looked like it was just advancing kind of generalized common sense on behalf of everybody. So he could mix behind the scenes, bare knuckle bureaucratic brawling with a really calm, forceful and direct public speaking style Sam Skinner worked with Powell when Skinner served under President George H.W. Bush as Secretary of Transportation, then also as the President's Chief of Staff. And he says that Powell was a great public servant and a great person. Most importantly, he was a very decent human being, and he kind of rose from the ranks. And uh, he understood people, uh, and he understood people well. And uh, he was always thoughtful. Uh, he was never combative. Uh, he was dedicated, and, and uh, when he made his mind up, he would know how to work the system uh, in a way that was most effective for the Defense Department and for the country. But he didn't do it in a way that offended people or he was abusive in any way. He was a very calm influence at a very difficult time in our nation. Skinner credits Powell's leadership for during the first Gulf War. Now, Powell had served two tours in Vietnam, and Heard says that Powell used lessons with him from that. He carried that as a foundation of his take on the military. He was disillusioned with the U.S. reliance on military force and didn't want his generation of leaders to make the same Vietnam-era mistakes. I've always felt strongly that you should try to solve conflicts in this world through negotiations, through diplomacy. Anytime we can solve a problem that way and not use force and satisfy our objectives, let's push for that. But Powell did, in a sense, repeat those very same mistakes when, as Secretary of State, he lent his credibility and charisma to pushing for the war with Iraq. My colleagues, Every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. Despite that, weapons of mass destruction were never found in Iraq, and Powell later came to regret his role. I regret it now because the information was wrong. They can put anything they want on his career, but he did tell everybody and did say to people, he said, if you go into Iraq, you break it, you own it. That was, that was his line, and he told that to everybody before this all occurred, and he used it after we were in Iraq. And nobody is perfect. And nobody goes forward without making mistakes. And by the way, these, those decisions are not made by the Secretary of State or the Chairman. of the. He, he, had, he had a respect for the chain of command and authority, which he grew up in the military, and he uh, he knew his advice would be taken in to consideration, and uh, it turns out that uh, it wasn't quite what we thought it would be. But if you take that decision compared to all the things he was involved in in his career, both private sector and, and personally, that just everything else just, you know, well exceeds whatever happened in that particular decision. Well, now the Northwestern political scientist Ian Hurd says that some of Powell's apologies saying he didn't know that was a bit of a dodge given that experts at the time knew full well the situation with weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But he says in those contradictions, Powell embodies long-term contradictions in American policy. On the one hand, 
trying to be smart and sensible and common sense and not make things worse. But on the other hand, there's a kind of quickness to the use of force in American foreign policy that he, uh, he fell into sometimes for sure, not just in Iraq, but elsewhere. Uh, and the US foreign policy is told through those two traditions. Now, those who know him say there was a lot more to Powell than his military and White House roles. He loved his family, his wife, Alma. He enjoyed working on cars. James Kenney was ambassador to Ireland from 2003 to 06, which means Powell was his direct boss as Secretary of State. And he says that Powell was kind, also a computer geek. Now, think of this. In 2000, when I got there, there was Wang computers in the State Department and all over the world. The Wang company peaked in 2000, or 1982, and the State Department had Wang. So he went to Congress and got all this money, hundreds of millions of dollars, to rewire the world securely, and everyone got new software and new computers so that we could talk to each other. There's, there was embassies that couldn't even talk to each other over the computers. And Powell brought that, he, and these are like stories no one knows about what he did. And uh, so he was revered inside the State Department. They loved him. Powell was the first black person to serve as chair of the Joint Chiefs and also as Secretary of State. This even as African Americans had served in the US military for generations. It was only in Powell's time that black troops were permitted to hold military leadership roles. While there's a story about his own success in breaking these barriers, there's another story there in the resistance to allowing African Americans to serve in leadership that only began to, to uh, break up after Vietnam and then uh, people like Colin Powell could step into roles for which they had been qualified for, uh, for a century. Again, Powell was fully vaccinated, but he was also fighting a cancer that meant he had a severely compromised immunity. Doctors from Northwestern here in Chicago say that to Powell's death today should not discourage anyone from getting the COVID vaccine. If anything, they say that his passing shows how important it is, particularly for those who are immunocompromised, to get the vaccine and also to get the booster shots. Brenda, back to you. Amanda, thank you.